Hey, this is YBR with Beeman G Drive. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Gravel Blue Buck. And with this vehicle, we're gonna be more looking at the parts that make up the configurations and not necessarily the configurations themselves. Because if we went through each individual vehicle, there would be a lot of redundancy. Because if you look at the vehicles here, it's the 291 V8 four-door sedan and an automatic. Then we also have the manual mode of that. Then we have the two-door version of that. Then we have the Marshall four-door version of that. Then we have the Marshall two-door version. We don't need to go over all of those. You just need to know the difference between an automatic and a manual, or the difference between a two-door and a four-door, and the difference between a Marshall and a non-Marshall, and then you know what all those vehicles are, basically, with me only needing to drive one or two of them. So let's go ahead and start off with the base version of the vehicle, which is the 232 i6 four-door sedan. As you saw in the menu, this is an official vehicle. Some official vehicles, like the Ibishu 200BX, look very, very similar to the car they were obviously inspired by, which in this case was the Nissan 200SX. But then you have vehicles like the SBR4, which it has some influences from other vehicles, but it's definitely doing its own thing. This vehicle feels like it's more doing its own thing. You can see some influences from like a Chevy Impala or a Dodge 880, but I wouldn't say that it is just straight up either of those vehicles. It's a little bit of a mix of the two, plus some parts that are unique to itself. Anyways, let's go ahead and get driving with this thing. Now, the funny thing is, is with this one, it has an inline six. And when you see this big American sedan driving around with the sound of an inline six engine coming out of it, it just doesn't sound right. It, it should have a big V8 sound, but it just sounds wrong. So I'm gonna make you guys listen to it so you can see what I mean. See, it just doesn't sound right. Yes, it's realistic that a vehicle like this would have an inline six option, but when you look at it, you expect to hear the sound of a nice V8 engine, not the sound of an inline six engine. So anyways, there's an impact. There's a look at the damage. You can kind of see the wimpy inline six engine in there a little bit, which we'll be replacing very, very soon, but I want to drive around with it a little bit more before we do that. But before we do that, I want to make sure you guys get a good look at the damage before we reset it. And to give this thing a little bit more help on the drive, how about we go downhill instead of uphill? Because this poor little inline six engine only makes about 120 horsepower and the vehicle weighs about 3,500 pounds. So it's not like we have a lightweight engine in a lightweight vehicle. We just have a lightweight engine in a normal weight vehicle, which means, yeah, it doesn't feel very fast, but at least going downhill, gravity will help you along. I mean, we're going around 70 miles per hour almost right now. so. It can get moving, but I don't trust it one bit in the corners. Because in this trim, it handles just as bad as you'd expect. It's a 1960s American sedan of decent length. Those are not known for their excellent handling. And when they're equipped with the inline six, they're not even remembered at all. So let's go ahead and finish this thing off. We got a nice big pile of rocks. We're slamming into those. A little roll going. The tire is deflated but I bet it could still drive if we can get some traction. I'm trying to drive right now, we just can't get the traction. So how about we save the vehicle and then bring it back up to the hill, load it, and then we can take a look at the damage. Front suspension is not looking so good. Neither is the rear suspension. What about the right side? All right, on the right side, those ones look okay. So let's see, can we put any power down? Yeah, we can move this thing on the downhill and probably even a little bit on the uphill, but it's not a happy vehicle. It is really angry as I try to drive it along here. So let's go ahead and give it one final crash into the wall. And then let's get a vehicle that's even in worse condition than this one. We're going to go with the horrible. I got to mention the name too, because I really like what they do with the names for the bad versions of the vehicles because they all have a different name. For example, the blue buck is the horrible. The barstow is the awful. The moonhawk is the terrible. And I'm assuming if they ever get a bad version of the Burnside Special, it'll have its own unique name that describes just how bad it is. Now, this vehicle is based on the one we were just driving. It has the exact same engine, yet ironically, it actually makes about 10 more horsepower. So it has about 130 horsepower. How? Because it doesn't have a full exhaust system on it. It just has the hood exit exhaust, which bellows this black fume, which I'm sure destroys the ozone 
and melt icebergs. But you get 10 extra horsepower. But I would say it's worth it, especially considering icebergs aren't that great. I mean, think about it. The iceberg sunk the Titanic. Do you really want to support an iceberg after it does something like that? Anyways, in addition to the hood exit exhaust, which I haven't really given you guys a good look at. Yeah, it's a big hole. You could have made a nice small hole, but it's like, no, make a big hole so you can also see the super powerful inline six engine. And then also the very obvious paint job on it. I say paint job because the rust doesn't have any effect on like the actual strength of the vehicle. It's literally just a paint job applied to it. Then we have the bash bar on the front in place of the front bumper. And I like the fact that it has just two of the headlights. The other two, they're gone. It would actually be neat too if they had a version of the headlight you could install on the vehicles where it just doesn't work. You know, just as another like thing like you could put on junker cars like this one. I wonder if there's a mod out there that does that. Anyways, on the back, we're missing the lights as well and the rear bumper. On the inside, it has been stripped down quite a bit. Kind of hard to do a comparison if you don't know what the vehicle looks like normally. I'll show you that in a bit, but it's been stripped down and it's got a roll cage in it. And you can see the roll cage attaches where the rear seats would normally be. Where those rear seats go, that's anybody's guess because I have no clue. Now, time to crash the vehicle. We just need a nice solid wall and some room to get up to speed. We got the room to get up to speed already. Do we have a solid wall coming up? Come on, solid wall. All right, we got even more speed now. We're gonna be going about 60 miles per hour. There's the wall, that's a good wall. We're gonna use eight times slow-mo. And then here is the impact, which has actually broken the engine. Think the bash bar didn't do that much. I mean, no, we were going 60 miles per hour. That's a hard impact. And it's actually surprising just how much extra structural strength that roll cage gave us because the body of the car held up surprisingly well, except for just the front where it crashed. Let's continue along our list of blue bucks. So we've now done just the first two, but we don't need to look at this one because it's the exact same as the one I was driving previously, except it's a manual. This one though, we will take a look at because this is a two door version where the one we were driving before was the four door. In fact, why don't I go ahead and spawn up one of each side by side so you can see both of them at once. And I think the best way to compare the two door and the four door is to park them right next to each other. So I'll park the four door there and the two door goes right behind it with a nice crashing park. So here we go. Two door, four door. Is the difference just an added door? Not quite. Because if you look closely at the glass on this vehicle, you'll see there is a small gap between the end of the door and the seats. If we look at the glass on this one, there is no gap. So you can tell the doors on the four door are slightly smaller than the ones on the two door. Now, let's go ahead and go to a different map because this was just a little bit too tight for the kind of driving I wanna be doing right now. The next version of the blue buck we're gonna be taking a look at is the taxi, which is based on the four door sedan we were driving previously with a few small modifications. The most obvious of which is the paint job. It has a taxi paint job on it of yellow and green. You don't usually see yellow and green taxis anymore. Anyways, it also has the word Furwood Taxi on the side, and I believe Furwood is supposed to be like a location in East Coast USA. Got the little taxi sign up top. And then it also has stronger front and rear bumpers that have that little bar on the left and right of the license plate, and that's on both the front and the rear. And then also the suspension has been upgraded to be more heavy duty for the workloads that you would expect out of a taxi. Now they're at a bigger wide open area, we can go ahead and spawn up some AI traffic to have some extra fun with. And we're gonna drive very, very realistically for a little bit. This is gonna be a 100% simulation of a real life taxi driver. The good thing about taxi drivers is they drive crazy and fast, which is how I always drive in video games. So it's basically business as usual for me here. There is one difference though. If a vehicle is in my way and it's too inconvenient to go around them, we'll just slam into them. Like there's a car right there. This looks inconvenient to go around. So out of the way, you fool. That worked great. And maybe there's a vehicle that's not in my way, but I don't like them. So I smash into them as well. And that unfortunately destroys like the whole front left half of my vehicle. It's just completely ruined. It can kind of drive along a little bit, but I can't really steer. And oh, this guy, he just hit me. That was not on me. I wasn't looking where I was going. You can't blame me. Oh, now he's pushing me. Dude, what's your problem? I don't like him, but I do have an idea. Can we angle the camera where the car looks perfectly intact? Yeah, that looks fine from that angle. The next blue buck we're gonna be taking a look at is the 291 V8 versions. 
And once again on this one, we have the four-door versions and the two-door versions. We're going to start off with the two-door because I like the color on the two-door better than the four-door. Now this one finally has a V8 engine and it sounds the way you'd expect it to sound. Just listen and watch it drive and tell me this doesn't just feel right compared to the other one. That, to me, is the kind of sound I would expect to hear out of a vehicle that looks like this. Now, unfortunately, even though it has a V8 engine, it still only makes about 160 horsepower. It does have longer gearing, though, so it has a higher top speed if you can ever reach it. And then it also has a rear sway bar, so it handles ever so slightly better. And you can see who's behind you now because it has a right mirror. But that's about it in terms of changes from the inline six version to the v8 version it's mostly just to get the engine upgrade but you get some small upgrades as well so let's go ahead and find a good place to violent park this thing there's the perfect place to park it right into an abishu pessima and we can keep on shoving them that's the power of an american v8 that makes 160 horsepower yeah it's not that much you don't brag about 160 horsepower but you can brag about american horsepower Right, so we now come to a stop. I cannot push them. They cannot push me. We are stuck together. So I'll go ahead and what are you doing? Oh, he just hit the tree. The other guy's going around him. Man, AI is funny. They just do wacky things sometimes. Anyways, the next blue buck we're going to be taking a look at is going to be another 291 V8, but it's going to be the Marshall four-door version. What is the Marshall? It's kind of like the mid-trim version. So it has the engine upgrade. And then it has the trim upgrades as well. What do the trim upgrades give you? It gives you, again, the stronger bumpers like the ones you saw on the taxi from before, or both front and rear. We also got the chrome strip on the side as well as the lettering on the outside so everybody knows that you have a blue butt. And then also on the front, you got some extra text as well. It says gravel, a little horn logo right there. That logo on the hood that I'm very, very highly zoomed on that is not normally present. That guy just overtook me. We can't let this happen. Emergency situation. No longer reviewing vehicles. We must overtake that man who overtook me. Oh, no. What are you doing? You are so lucky I crashed into this guy. I need to exchange insurance information. I need his information because this is all his fault. I did nothing wrong there. But that does cover all the visual changes. In addition to that, though, there is a small performance upgrade. Yes, it has the same engine, but it has a different carburetor system. This one has a four-barrel carburetor system on it, where the other one only had two. That upgrade is good for about an extra 10 horsepower, so it makes like 175 horsepower. Again, it's not a fast vehicle, but it makes the right noise at least. And it'll get you from A to B. Where is B? How about the trees up there? That will be B. And now we are at B and barely got damaged on the rear. Like the rear looks fine and I was hoping to damage the rear a bit more. And that's gonna do it for the 291 V8 versions of the Blue Buck. Basically you have three options you can combine in any way you want. Automatic or manual, two door or four door, and Marshall or not Marshall. Next up, we're gonna go to the 353 V8 versions. And on these ones, they're all Marshalls, but you still have the option between automatic or manual on all of them. And then you also have the option between two-door and four-door. But instead of having the option between Marshall and non-Marshall, you have the option between hardtop and sedan. And yeah, there is a two-door sedan. The only thing more confusing than that are the four-door coupes. Thankfully, I haven't seen any of those in BMG, but you do see them in real life. So with the 353 V8, we finally break the 200 horsepower barrier. This one has about 215 horsepower. And what is going on up here? You guys don't know how to drive, but thankfully I do. In addition to that, though, it also has an upgraded radiator to keep the engine cool and a heavy duty front suspension and brakes, which I assume is required because of all the extra weight from the V8 engine compared to the inline six. And with this much power and the wheels on this thing, you can actually have some fun with it and slide around and avoid traffic that seems to want to churn at the worst possible time. 
I don't know if you guys really noticed that, but that dude just about hit me. The AI is really on a bad streak right now with driving bad. You have to watch out for them. Oh, here's a fun idea. Let's just ram this dude. We're going to be going like 75 miles per hour, smashing right into him, seeing how much damage can we do to his ETK. That's a, not as much damage as I thought. We kind of deflected off and, oh no, we'll put these trees here. Don't put trees there. Oh, that probably wrecked it, didn't it? Let's see, can we back out? Oh, uh, yeah. I thought the trees were going to wreck it because we were going 75 miles per hour at first. Somehow it's still driving. It's not pretty, but it is driving. Oh, look, another spot where the AI messed up. Hey, I'm here to help. Let me just bash on through to you guys. Yeah, this is totally helpful. All right, I can't really do much with this vehicle, so I'm letting you look at the damage. And uh, now we'll go ahead and freshen it up and just drive right in front of these guys for a little comparison. So we're going to say, what's the difference between a sedan and a hard body? So we'll get the hard body version of the two door sedan. It would actually be easier to show you the difference between the two if I had the four doors. But we'll start with the two door and then I'll show you the four door afterwards. Basically though, it all comes down to looking at this pillar right here. You see how thin it is on the hard body? And then if we go over to the regular sedan, you'll notice that it's a lot thicker. Why is that? It's because on the sedan, the door actually attaches to a part of the frame that goes straight up right here. So you can see that is a really strong, solid piece of metal there. But on the hard body, it does not have that. Instead, there's just nothing there. And that's by design. So yeah, you still see there's a little piece of metal right there. That's really just to hold the window in place. That is not a structural element. And now let me go ahead and get the four door version so you can really see the difference. Because once you get the four door, then it's like it really gets you like, oh, that's the difference. That's how I figured it out. I spawned up one of each and I just kind of tore them apart. And then I realized, wait a minute, look what happens when you tear off the doors. I got to find my other vehicle. Where are you, other vehicle? The chaos that's causing everywhere else. I don't know what the AI is doing, but every vehicle I went to looked like there was chaos. So we'll get four-door sedan. Doesn't have to be the same engine, but why not? Now we'll go ahead and open both the doors. Violently, of course. Yeah, just remove the doors, actually. That's fine, too. So if we remove the doors, you can easily see the sedan. The pillar is there and strong. And if we remove the doors, removing the doors is actually better. So remove the doors on the hard body. See, the, there's no pillar there. Yeah, there's a piece right here that the door attaches to, but there's not a structural pillar here. That's the difference between the hard bodies and the sedans, and that's the only difference that I can really find. It's a very, very minor difference, but I had to point it out because there are a bunch of different vehicles, and the only difference is one's a hard body and one's a sedan. If you don't know the difference, it can be really confusing. Anyhow, I think I'm done for East Coast USA, so how about we head to Utah USA? On to the next blue buck we're going to be driving. This one is the police package, which is based on the 353 that we were driving before, but it has some small changes. Most obvious, the paint job. So they are police. What's their department? We zoom in enough. They work for Furwood City. If you don't want to zoom in that much. You can also just look at the back where the text is much larger. In addition to the paint job, we have the antennas and the light on top. And I really like antennas. It's just fun to watch them kind of bounce around as you wiggle the car and it doesn't feel like enough cars in the game have antennas. Like they're just fun to have on the car and watch and stuff. And the only ones we seem to have were like police editions for some reason. And in addition to that, this one has been debadged a bit. So it doesn't have like the chrome on the side or the badging. And then also on the front, it doesn't have the badging with the words blue buck or the little logo on the hood. It also has a heavy duty suspension for the heavy duty work that the police cars do. And now we'll just drive it around a little bit. Performance wise, it's basically the same to when I was driving. Technically, it's a tiny bit heavier, but it's not noticeable in regular driving. So let's see if it's noticeable in regular flight. Nope. Couldn't tell the difference in the way they flew. That has broken the engine, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and try to get this thing onto its wheels so you could take a look at the damage before we go to the next vehicle. So roof has been thoroughly crushed. We even got a little bit of fire coming in the mix. Hello, fire. Only there was some water to put this thing out, but the water is actually kind of quite a bit away. Anyways, let's go to the next blue buck. This one's going to be the 423 V8. And on this one, we once again have automatic and manual options, but this one only comes in the hard top configuration. And with the hard top configuration, 
It doesn't mean that the roof is actually different. All it means is it has a two-tone paint job, so it looks like it has a removable roof, even though it isn't. It's a solid roof. So we want the two door or the four door. How about we do the two door since I have a four door right now. And with this version, we are finally making some power. This thing makes about 300 horsepower and with that much power, it needed a better way to put it down. So instead of an open differential, it now has a limited slip rear differential. It also has longer gearing and the heavy duty rear suspension you saw in the police version we were just driving. As I showed you in the vehicle selector, it has a two tone paint job. But the thing is, is this is not a Marshall version of the vehicle. The weird thing about the 423 V8 is if you want a Marshall, it has to be a four door. You cannot get a Marshall two door with the 423 V8. And one of the new upgrades you get when you have a 423 V8 Marshall is you get this little cover over the rear wheels. You just can't get it with this one though. It doesn't have it. It's not possible, at least not from the factory. You'd have to get a piece from a four door and hope it fits as you stick it onto yours. That's really the only option you got. So drivability wise though, you can feel like this is a bit too much engine for the chassis because the one we were driving before with 215 horsepower-ish, that one felt the most balanced. With this one though, it feels like it's a little too much engine for how bad the vehicle handles. It's still perfectly fine for driving. It's not like it's some uncontrollable thing, but you can definitely tell sometimes like this vehicle was not designed for engines this big. It works fine with the smaller V8s and the inline six, but you just get this engine and you can tell the chassis does not keep up with the engine's power. Anyways, let's go ahead and just wreck this thing on the hill. Got it right into the tree. How does it look? Oh my goodness. <laughs> we gotta get a better look at this. So I'm gonna save it, reset it, and then load it up because I managed to bend the frame at a 90 degree angle while the body of the vehicle is still mostly straight. That just looks crazy. You can so clearly see the engine. It's like completely removed from the vehicle. I wonder, do we have steering? We have steering somehow. That's great. What? How can it put down power? That makes no sense. How can the engine put down power to the rear wheels after that? Because look at this, okay? We have the driveline literally bending at a 90 degree angle yet somehow the rear wheels are still getting power. And now that I think about it, after the impact, I did not see anything that said the driveline broke. So I don't think this is some glitch with loading up the vehicle. I think somehow the driveline is still intact and I don't understand how that's even possible, but basically it's just going whoop, just like that, all the way to the rear wheels. Although, does it actually look connected? No, it's somehow visually disconnected but it's still driving. I'm pretty sure this is a glitch of sorts and now I can't drive anymore. Let's reset it and see if we can drive again if we reset it. And we can drive now. I have no idea what's going on, but that is crazy. I could just spin in circles because I can't do any sort of steering because the front's so ruined, but that's cool. And before I forget, I should also mention the interior on this version is a little bit different. Instead of a bench seat, we have bucket seats. We also have a nice little place we could store things in there, it looks like. And then we have upgraded gauges. And one of the cool things about the gauges is you have a gauge down there. That is your tachometer. And I thought it was really cool that there's a gauge down there. I have no idea if that's safe at all having to look that far down to look at your tachometer if you ever need to. Even though, especially considering we have space up here, but it still looks pretty cool, don't you think? And one thing I should mention is the frame on this vehicle is a little bit unusual. So let's remove the body from the frame so we can take a closer look at the frame itself. And you see the frame? doesn't have any sort of like outside rails. All of it converges to this one central point, which is very similar to the X-Frame used by GM in the 50s and 60s. And for a comparison point, if you don't really know what vehicle frames normally look like, let me grab a Moonhawk and we'll show you what this one looks like without the body as well. So go to frame, remove the body, and you can see on this one, it's kind of more what you'd expect to see. You'd expect to see the frame kind of support the whole underside of the vehicle. This one is just, it's a little bit more unusual with it being just the X shape. And one of the things that was kind of commonly said is these ones aren't as safe because you don't have the strong structure on the outside of the vehicle. So if you have a side impact, it's not as safe as the structure on this vehicle. Someday in the future, we should definitely test that to see if that's true or not. But right now we're just more focused on reviewing the vehicle itself because we still got a handful of configurations to go through. Next up, we have the 423 V8 Road Sport two-door hardtop. And this one kind of does its own thing. 
because the Road Sport is only available as a two-door hardtop and only available in manual. You can't get an automatic, you can't get in four-door. It's just its own unique thing, but you can get a similar configuration in the Police Interceptor, which we'll be taking a look at later on. But this one is designed to dominate the highway and the drag strip with a specially tuned big block V8, sport tires, and suspension. So this thing has the same engine size, but here's the thing. It makes a heck of a lot more power. It makes almost 400 horsepower. How do they increase the power by that much? They double up on the carburetors. It used to have just a four barrel carburetor. Now it has a twin four barrel carburetor configuration. And it also has, thankfully, a sportier suspension setup. It still feels like it's more power than you should have in the body, but it's not a lot more. It's kind of like the same setup you felt like with the other one. And look at how fast it can crash with this setup. Unfortunately, it's upside down, so we'll have to get it upright real quickly. And would you look at that? This vehicle has been flattened. I bet if it still drove, we could drive it right under a big rig without much problem whatsoever. And now we're already gonna change vehicles. So we're gonna go with the police interceptor version, which I skipped over because the police interceptor is based on the vehicle we were just driving. So it is a 400 horsepower police vehicle. It is a good upgrade over the other one. And here's the paint job on it. And you look at this, you do not think police car. It does not look like a modern police car. Maybe that's what they look like back then. I honestly have no idea, but you just wouldn't expect it to be a police car. It also only has a single antenna instead of dual like the previous one, but the light is the same and it lights up just as you would expect. You can even turn on the noise, which we could have done with the other one as well, but it's noisy. Why would you want that? And I have completely overshot my corner because yes, this thing can accelerate really good. Braking on the other hand, not as good. <laughs> that is one thing you gotta watch out for. Sometimes you just gotta say, yeah, I missed my corner. I'm a quarter mile away and I already know I missed it because I'm going way too fast. If only I had somebody to chase down. Wait a minute. Is that a criminal right there? Oh no, that's not a criminal. That's just a rock. At least I tried to catch the criminal, right? I did my best. But unfortunately, my best was only good enough to flip the car upside down. Which means we're now done with the police interceptor. How about we go to the low rider now? Now this one I showed off a little bit in the update video itself. And the main thing about the low rider is you can really do some nonsense with the suspension and it has a crazy cool looking paint job. Like some people might not like these low rider paint jobs like, but I have a buddy who has one of these and I saw it in real life and I was like, man, that is a nice paint job. Although it almost looks like this one has overspray on it, doesn't it? Like it looks like they just oversprayed it. It doesn't look quite good with that. I get what they were going for. I just don't dig it where it has that almost overspray look. One of the neat things that I actually kind of just accidentally showed you now is when you have this suspension, you can actually see the extra hydraulic parts inside of the trunk that allow it to work and the extra batteries. My goodness, look at all those batteries. Is it hydraulics? How do they actually, I don't know what exactly they use for these suspension things. But the important thing is, look, we can do this and 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 we can do this in any combination of all those things you just saw. You can do all kinds of crazy nonsense with the suspension, which is just fun to mess around with and in the future I want to make a full video of just trying some things out that I want to try out with this but that's just to give you an idea of what the lowrider is for now and get a good look at the paint job because that's a neat paint job like look at that roof it's like hand drawn looking and oh no I ruined my paint job forget about everything else I ruined the paint job okay next up I believe is the custom correct yes it is the custom and on this one I want to go ahead and try it out on a track so we're going to move over to west Coast USA. With the custom, we once again have a 423 V8, but it makes even more power than it did in the Road Sport. In the Road Sport, it made 382. In the custom, it makes 384 horsepower. That's two horsepower more. In addition to that, it has an upgraded suspension setup. And then it also has a custom hood. From the outside, the hood doesn't look too fancy, but what's cool about the hood is when you go to the inside. When you go to the inside, you can actually see the engine from the interior of the vehicle, and I think that's really neat. You also have a shift light that lights up, telling you when to shift. You see it's lit up, and the automatic transmission just doesn't care. It shifts when it wants to, apparently. Let's go ahead and go back to the outside driving camera, and try to do some driving. Oh, this is the greatest camera angle ever, isn't it? Come on, game. Give me an angle where I can actually see where I'm going, at least. 
And what I'll do is I'll drive around the track a little bit with this one. And I quite like the configuration on the Custom. It has nearly 400 horsepower, and so far that always seems like too much for the vehicle. But it has a pretty well-sorted suspension. It's not like a real race car suspension setup, but it's probably as good as you can get for a car that you would still want to drive on the streets without completely breaking your spine. It still feels like a pretty big, heavy American car, but it'll at least get around the corners decently and it's not feeling like it's gonna spin out all the time or anything like that. And the upgraded tires on this one probably also make a big difference as well because it doesn't have just the upgraded suspension, it also has a tire upgrade, which tires are important. Tires are huge. The difference between a modern day tire and the tires that would have came on this vehicle from the factory, huge night and day kind of difference there. All right, next up, I want to use the drag version. So that's why we're slowly making our way over to the drag strip. Not really slowly. I'm driving as fast as I can drive this thing. It's just a little bit of a drive, that's all. And with the drag version, it makes some power. This thing still has the 423 V8 engine, I believe, but it has nitrous and a supercharger and all kinds of stuff. Most obvious thing you'll notice is the paint job. This thing has a paint job that's kind of more what you would see on a drag car when the vehicle was new. So for the engine, 423 V8, stage four supercharger and nitrous, and boy, is it fast. Let's go ahead and do a drag race against a guy and a whoop on him. So what are they gonna drive? Give me a random opponent, similar performance, not fast enough. I want a drag car, but I don't want the exact same one that I have. Like, that just seems dorky, doesn't it? All right, apparently they don't want to give them a drag car. I don't know why. So tell you what, I'll just go ahead and select it by hand. How about they get a Burnside Special Drag Edition? That sounds like a good vehicle. And they should be pulling up. Perfect. I'm not going to bother watching them because I want to make sure I got my nitrous armed and ready to go. They'll be coming up any moment. So this one is called Bad Boo Boo and it's sponsored by Taurus Tires, Alpha Textiles. Who else? Grip all. Wait, they even have a, a gravel on them, huh? Node online. All these sponsors. So nice. All right. Stage my vehicle up. All right. We're good. Three, two, one. Go. Oh, wow. They actually had a good launch. Oh, no. Come on. Come on. Yes. I did not have a great launch. I'll say that now, but it was just enough to beat them. You could tell I was beating them at the end for sure because I was going 173 to 162. That was a good race. Can't do much better than that, so that's that. Now, the final blue buck we're gonna be taking a look at, which is a stock car. Now, a stock car is configured for 1960s stock car racing with a specifically tuned big block V8, and I have no idea where my car is. Let's bring it back to the track real quickly, and then we'll take the stock car out for a drive. We could drive it here, but that's it's not really where it's best at. We'll get it to the racetrack. So with this one, it actually feels like a race suspension setup. This is not a vehicle you'd want to drive in the streets because it would break your spine. And it also has a roll cage as well. And you never really want to daily drive a car with a roll cage because then you usually want to wear a helmet all the time because if you have a roll cage and no helmet, what happens is you hit your head on the metal bars and it's just worse than if you didn't even have a roll cage a lot of the time. So anyways, here is the paint job. I kind of like it. It's like a little bit of like a lightning bolt shape and it's a real nice color, the yellow and the gray. just. Nice color. Also, some of the headlights are blocked off because we don't need headlights. We need lightweight, fast vehicle. Now, time to go for a drive. And I don't want to just do big straightaways. We want to do corners as well to show off that this thing does handle good. Like, compared to the Custom, this thing handles real nice. I really like the way it handles. The Custom, it just handled decently. That's it. It handled decently. It was good enough. This one, though, I would actually say, yeah, this is a nice car to drive around a racetrack. Anyways, I think that's going to do it for this video. Till next time, it's YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how many days it takes me to make a review for a vehicle that came out almost a month ago. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Anyways, do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.